Yo, what's going on, y'all? It's Cone back here again today with another video, and today we're going to be breaking down the Milwaukee Bucks against the Indiana Pacers playoff series. This is one that y'all have been begging me to go ahead and break down every video I've made so far in a playoff series. Half the comments I feel like are, hey, talk about Bucks versus Pacers next, and I've been waiting to get a little bit more of news on the whole Giannis situation before eventually making it, but the series starts tomorrow, so this is my last chance that I've got, so let's go ahead and talk about it. It's one that's been heavily discussed. It features, of course, the Milwaukee Bucks, who have been pretty disappointing this season and not lived up to expectations post-game trade, winning less than 50 games. If I told you before the season that without too many major injuries, the Dame Giannis Bucks would not win 50 games, you probably would have called me crazy, but it's been a very up-and-down, dramatic roller coaster of a season. They, of course, were playing pretty well, at least in terms of their record. The Encore product wasn't the greatest, so they ended up firing Adrian Griffin halfway into his first season, hired Doc Rivers out of semi-retirement. He was doing broadcast stuff. They showed some improvement under him, but then struggled to end the year. And now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, they face a really scary injury that leaves Giannis Antetokounmpo's availability up in the air. Meanwhile, for the Pacers, it's been a great year by their standards. They managed to avoid the play-in entirely getting back to the playoffs for the first time in a few years. They had all-NBA all-star starter level play from Halliburton for a majority of the season. A great year from Miles Turner, some improvement from some of their young guys. And they made the Siakam trade, a massive move that I really loved and still like to this day, assuming they can re-sign him this offseason. On paper, these two teams are a very intriguing matchup because of their similarities. The Pacers are the second ranked offense on the season, the Bucks are the sixth, the Pacers are the 24th ranked defense while the Bucks are the 19th, and the two teams are neck and neck in net rating. Basically, they're both offensive juggernauts that struggle to defend, and it's probably going to lead to some ridiculous, very offensively focused hoops, and it already has, which brings us to one of the most interesting aspects of these two teams on paper, it's that they've got some history. They played five times this season, which is a ton, and this is, of course, due to the in-season tournament, and the Pacers got the better of the Bucks in four out of those five matchups. Their only loss came in the game where Giannis had a 60-piece, and that involved that whole game ball incident where he thought the Pacers took the game ball, but they said that they didn't, and he ran back to the locker room, and him and Halliburton were up in each other's faces. It was a lot, so not only have they played a bunch, they now know each other very well, but there's that little bit of personal beef added into things. Indian has kind of proven over the course of the year that they have the Bucks number. Although I will say all five games were played on or before January 3rd. So it's been over three months since these two teams have faced each other. That was even before the Adrian Griffin firing. So they haven't played under Doc Rivers. It was before the All-Star break. So while it is something people are talking about a lot, and I do think it factors into a lot of people's vision that maybe the Pacers can pull off this upset, I'm not going to live and die by that metric alone. Instead, I want to go ahead and dive into some big keys to the matchup. And eventually I will make my prediction at the end of the video. That's always the hardest part because I feel like it might change before the playoffs, but it's a serious breakdown video. I've got to give a prediction as tough as it may be. So let's talk about those keys. Uh, the biggest one by far to the surprise of nobody is the health of Giannis Antetokounmpo. Of course, he suffered a calf injury in one of the last games of the season that happened seemingly out of nowhere. The ball was inbounded. He started running up the court and all of a sudden kind of fell down grabbing at that calf area. They called a timeout, left the game and hasn't played since. It was concerning in the moment, but even more so now because when it happened at the first, we were like, okay, well, we don't know if it's going to keep him out for any of the playoffs. And now reports are saying that the Bucks are pretty prepared to be without him for at least game one and that he could not return until later in the series. Obviously, this is a massive blow to the Bucks, who Giannis put on his back this season. He went ahead and had the best season of his career, putting up 30.4 points per game, 11.5 rebounds, 6.5 assists, 1.2 steals, and 1.1 blocks, becoming the first player ever to average over 30 points per game while shooting 60% from the field or better. He was the definition of unstoppable. A lot of nights, he just looked like Shaq, saying that, okay, I know nobody can stop me from getting to the rim and finishing there, so I'm going to do exactly that. One of the best interior scoring seasons I've ever seen, and he was especially dominant against Indiana. In those five games that they played against each other, Giannis averaged 42 points per game, 13 rebounds, and five assists, including not only the 60-point game, but a 50-point game as well, and he shot 68% from the field in those contests. He was unbelievable. Even though the Pacers got the better of them in four out of five games, Giannis was basically getting anything he wants, and he was by far and away the biggest reason why a lot of those games were even close in the first place. So naturally, it's going to be a massive uphill climb against Indiana without him. On the season, the Bucks went 4-5 and five without Giannis and 4-4 four and four in games without Giannis, but Dame's still playing. That's not bad, but they're going into a playoff series. Intensity is going to ride a bunch. And again, it's a team that's had their number throughout the season that has been looking and waiting to play them 
it's scary. They've got a target on their back and not having their best player, one of the best players in the entire NBA in arguments for the best player, it's going to be a massive loss. If he misses more than one game, things could get very scary for the Bucks fast. Like they could still come back if they're down 1-1 or 2-0 and he returns. But at the same time, you don't want to rush him back from injury and risk a bigger injury like we saw with Kevin Durant. KD back with the Warriors when he tore his Achilles in the finals. He was coming off of a calf injury, came back. Some people said it might be a bit too early, but he said, I've got to come back to help the Warriors try and win this finals. And it led to that massive injury that caused him to miss the entirety of the next season. I don't know exactly what the link is between calf and Achilles injuries, but it feels like they come together pretty often. And so that's very scary. You can't risk losing Giannis for like the entirety of next season. That would be the worst possible scenario. So even though you want to bring him back as soon as possible to keep this series alive to prevent momentum from swinging too far in favor of Indiana, how much are you willing to risk to get this win? I'm keeping my fingers crossed that Giannis can return and play at the ridiculous level he was playing at earlier on the season, but I'm a little bit worried. This may be the second year in a row where a super untimely Giannis injury greatly affects the Bucks' ability to make any type of significant playoff run. So with Giannis' status in the air, the fate of the Bucks probably lies with Damian Lillard, who is the biggest key to this series outside of that health issue. What is he going to look like? Because it's been a disappointing year from him coming off one of the best seasons of his entire career individually last season. So far, this series put up just 24 points per game, shooting only 42% from the field and 35% from deep. Some of the lowest numbers of his entire career, especially as of late. He still is dishing out seven dimes per game, but he just hasn't been that dominant, efficient scoring force that we were expecting. To me, it felt like, sure, Dame's point per game average could drop, but now playing alongside Giannis and Chris and Brooke and Bobby Portis, it felt like he was going to have all the spacing in the world. Some of the pressure would be taken off of him, and he was going to come in here and have one of the most efficient seasons we've ever seen. Instead, he just has hasn't been that great. He ended up being an all-star, but he's nowhere near all NBA conversations when last year that was pretty much a given that he was that level of player. If Giannis was healthy, the Bucks would probably be able to survive with Dame playing at this level, but with Giannis not playing for at least the moment, they need way more out of him. Now, credit to Dame. He did perform really well in his eight games played this season without Giannis, where he dropped 30 points, four rebounds, and 7.6 dimes while shooting 45, 40, 92 splits. That's incredible. If they can get that from Dame, I think they could have some some success. But again, this is the playoffs and the Pacers are really going to key on him as the number one threat. Now you might think that's not a crazy threat because Indiana isn't a very good defensive team, but they did pretty good against Dame this season. In the four games that he played against them, he put up just 20.3 points per game on really rough efficiency. So Indiana had kind of a formula for him and those were games where Giannis was playing. Now there's not going to be that pressure on them. Really, they just have to focus on Dame and a couple of the other supporting guys. There is a lot of weight on his shoulders. It's not just him. Like, Chris has to be more consistent than he's been this season. Brooke is going to have to carry a bigger load. Bobby Portis, Malik Beasley, all those guys are going to have to contribute in a big way, depending on how much time Giannis misses. And even when he does come back, they all need to step up. But Dame is easily the guy they need most to elevate. This is his moment to show why the Bucks traded for him and that he can still be the superstar we've seen in the past. And if he doesn't show up the way that he has at some points throughout his playoff career, the Bucks are in massive trouble. On the other side of the equation, we have to also ask ourselves, what version of Tyrese Halliburton are we going to get? Early in the season, around the in-season tournament, he was putting up all NBA first, second team numbers, dropping 27 points per game in 12 dimes, hyper-efficient. He led the Pacers to the in-season tournament final. They were absolutely incredible, but mid-season he suffered that injury and he just hasn't been the same since. Since the All-Star break, he's putting up just 17 points per game and 9.6 dimes, while shooting just 45% from the field and 30% from three. It's a massive fall off from where he was earlier on the season and where we know he can be. He is an incredible talent. It just has it felt like the same type of game from him since that injury. He hasn't had his usual burst. He's not getting to his spots as well. Obviously, the three-point shot has fallen off a cliff. He has had some more typical games of his recently down the stretch, like 27 and 13 against Brooklyn, 35 and 5 against the Raptors. Like, those are good games, but if the Pacers want to take full advantage of this opportunity, he has to consistently be way more like early season Tyrese than the recent Halliburton that we've been seeing post injury especially because the Bucks don't have a lot of guys that can slow him down. I assume that Pat Bev is going to get the matchup against him. Tyrese is going to have that height advantage. I'm sure he's going to get a lot of switches. He's great in the pick and roll, diming up his teammates. The Bucks are going to be 
be in scramble mode a lot of times more often than not. He has to pick apart that defense. He has to keep the defense often with his own three-point shot, knocking down any open looks, take advantage of mismatches. They need Tyrese to really control this game and be the best player in the series. And if he can do that, or at least be like a 1A, 1B to whether it's Giannis coming back or Dame, I think the Pacers have a pretty good shot. But I do worry because, again, it just hasn't seemed like the same Tyrese Halliburton since that injury. To be honest, even more broadly than just how do the Bucks guard Tyrese Halliburton, I think the series may come down to how do these two teams slow each other down at all? This is going to be a wildly high scoring series. It's two teams that have not been good defensively. They rank 17th and 18th in the NBA since the All-Star break. It may just come down to who can actually get stops on the stretch of the game. For the Pacers, Miles Turner is going to have to be big down low. He's going to have to guard a lot of size, whether it's Brooke Lopez or Bobby Portis or Giannis attack downhill if and when he returns. Going to be up to him to try and slow down that paint assault. For Siakam, he'll probably get the primary Giannis assignment if and when he does come back. So that's going to be a tall task. And even before that, probably going to get some minutes on Bobby Portis, who I imagine will slot into the starting lineup. That's a bit of a size mismatch. Going to have to hold his own there. For Aaron Neesmith, he's been one of their best perimeter stoppers. Probably going to get some moments on Chris Middleton and Dame. What can he do in that regard? Andrew Nemhard, I imagine, will get a lot of moments on Dame as well. Been great defensively. Can he slow down Dame if he reaches his previous playoff levels? It's a lot of question marks for the Pacers out there defensively, but at the same time, the challenge for the Bucks may be even greater now with the Giannis loss because he was by far one of the biggest reasons why the defense ever stayed afloat in the first place. In the eight games that Giannis missed this season, the Bucks had a defensive rating of 121.8, which if you span that over the course of a full season, would be the worst in the entire NBA this year. To say the least, it's not ideal. They really need Giannis back, but if he doesn't return or, you know, in the games that he's not playing, they're going to need everybody to step up in a big way. Brooke Lopez has not been the deep point level player he was last season. He can still hold his own. He's going to have to do a lot for them, clean up mistakes down low in the paint. If blow bys happen on the perimeter, which I imagine they will a lot, going to have to be big as a rim protector, probably play a lot of minutes. Chris Middleton is going to have to elevate on that end. He's been pretty up and down both offensively and defensively this season. Need him to be consistent. Pat Bev, I assume we'll get the Halliburton assignment, giving up some size there, but does have that great defensive reputation. We'll see what he can do. Bobby Portis will be starting, give the Bucks some size down low, probably gonna have to slow down Siakam a little bit. He's helpful, but again, he's not quite Giannis. It's going to have to be a massive team effort on that end to stop one of the league's most potent offenses, and it would have been already if you had Giannis, never mind without him. To wrap up this section, I want to talk about a couple of guys that I think are X-Factors. The first one is Bobby Portis. When Giannis hasn't played, Portis has elevated his game tremendously. Whenever Giannis has been out, he's dropped 21 and 10 a night on great efficiency this season. That's incredible. They need way more of that from him. He's going to have to be a big-time player if they want to make up the offense that Giannis brings to the table. They might need even more than that if they want to be successful. So Bobby Portis is huge. Again, probably slotting into that starting lineup in place of Antetokounmpo. And for the Pacers, I think Pascal Siakam is going to have to be huge. He led the season for them in scoring after Tyrese really took a dip again post-All-Star break. and was incredible all throughout his Indiana tenure. The efficiency took a jump. He was good defensively. And he is by far the most experienced on this roster. This is a young team that hasn't made a lot of playoff runs. So Siakam with this championship pedigree is going to have to get them locked in and have them really take advantage of the first game or two where Giannis isn't playing and try and build up a series lead of some kind. With all of that in mind, it's time to go ahead and make a prediction. While all those keys matter a ton, I think easily the biggest factor in this is the Giannis injury. When does he come back? And if he does, because always a possibility he doesn't, what does the series score look like at that point? If Indiana comes out strong and takes a game or two early in Milwaukee, or say they go up like 2-1, it may be hard for the Bucks to turn this thing around, and I could see an outcome similar to last year against the Miami Heat, where, again, Giannis dealt with an injury early in the series. He played game one, but got hurt, didn't show up for a few games, and did come back. But at that point, the momentum was just too far gone against the Heat team that kind of had their number, had them figured out, and they ended up bowing out unceremoniously in the first round. I could see it being similar this year, depending on when Giannis returns. And honestly, even without the Giannis injury, I think this would have been a little bit of a concerning series because the Bucks have gone under 500 since Doc took over. And speaking of Doc Rivers, I don't trust him in the playoffs in the first place. He has done nothing to impress me as of late. The fact that Indiana has had their number, as have a lot of teams that play fast-paced basketball, the fact that the Pacers have just been better than the Bucks in the second half of the season, there are a lot of reasons to be concerned about this team, even with Giannis playing, and the fact that he isn't worries me a ton. The Bucks are going to have to get a lot out of Dame, Chris, and Brooke. And honestly, I'm not even sure if that will be enough. I just don't know how they slow this team down and consistently outscore them with Giannis not playing unless Dame just goes absolutely supernova. 
which we've seen at some points this season, but not consistently enough to make me believe he's going to do it on a regular basis. If Giannis returns by game two, I think the Bucs still get this thing done in six or seven, but assuming he misses a couple games at least, I think I'm going to go with the Pacers in six games. I think the Pacers have what it takes to jump on the Bucs from the outset. They've been the better team with or without Giannis over the past couple of months. They're playing with nothing to lose, have a play style that the Bucs have struggled against this season. Again, have had their number, and all the pressure in the world is on Milwaukee here. Like, the Pacers are just playing with house money. They weren't expected to win a series this season, at least not by me or most people. I'm sure, of course, they expected that of themselves. But even if they just put up a good fight against Milwaukee, I think it's a really successful year. With the Bucs, if they come short of anything but the conference finals, it's it's kind of a massive failure. They gave up everything to bring Damon to town. He is regressing. He doesn't have that many years left, probably at a superstar level. Giannis is dealing with this injury. What's that going to look like? Is he going to start to get unhappy? It'll be a second straight first run exit with a lot of aspirations. It would be a massive talking point going into the offseason where I imagine we would see big sweeping changes with the franchise. So the Pacers are just kind of playing free. They don't have a lot on the line. They don't have this major injury. Just too much uncertainty with Giannis at the moment for me to go ahead and comfortably pick the Bucks. If he comes back soon, I think they will win this series, but I think he's going to miss at least a couple of games. And I'm going to go ahead and say the Pacers go ahead and get this thing done, pulling off the upset and sending the Bucks into a very pivotal summer where they have to make some big decisions. With all of that being said, that's my breakdown and my prediction of this series. Let me know down below in the comments what your thoughts are. Who do you have winning? How many games? What are some other swing factors or X factors that I didn't talk about in this video that you think are important? Uh, how do you think the Giannis injury affects this? When do you think he'll come back? And even without Giannis, do you still think the Bucs have a chance to win this series? Say he doesn't come back at all. Can Dame do enough to take them over the hump? I appreciate y'all watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. A ton more playoff coverage coming soon. Y'all have been amazing in supporting me over the course of this first week of postseason hoops with the play-in tournament. A lot of series predictions. Going to be covering the series as they unfold, of course. And I'm going to have a full playoff predictions video coming out on Friday night into Saturday morning, depending when I get it out, whether it's before or after midnight. But that will be coming the second we get the full playoff bracket set. So be on the lookout for that. I appreciate y'all watching. I'll see y'all later. Rear one, say it back.